Hello. So one of the things that a branch from the lightning tree talks about is reopening the idea of what community is or could be. Um, it suggests that actually at least a third of the notion of community should live entirely in the imagination uh, and shouldn't be all continually sort of wrestled into the literal. So what I'm going to do is read um, a little bit from it, uh, but also sort of stop and start and expand whatever occurs to me in the time. Um, our community could involve long dead poets, shark's teeth, the mist on a Scottish glen, the erotic trim on a Bedouin tent. We could reach a wider perspective on the word rather than attempting to wrestle it always into concrete solutions, petitions, finger wagging, committees, living in a house of comrades arguing over who last bought the toiletries and who stole the tofu from the back of the fridge. And so this kind of thinking comes from years of being a wilderness rites of passage guide and the difficulty of the return from the forest, the return from the mountain to um, the society you left behind and getting caught in a kind of trap where you always presume what defines or is society is human. Uh, and I'm suggesting that it needs to be, a, we, need, we could do with a far more expansive perception of what that community is. Uh, these days that's far more like a network than a community. Communities could also be to do with reclaiming time. Time seems to have a harsh, worried pulse to many people. You know that feeling that everything is happening kind of quicker these days. And also we could reach back to a kind of community of ancestors. And I don't mean that in a, in a sort of an abstract notion. I'm talking about living historical, once lived and still living historical characters like uh, Emily Dickinson or Taliesin or Delius or Mirabai or Black Elk or Mingus, Wolfram von Eschenbach or John Coltrane. Bless his heart. Um, that's the wonderful news is that we have museums and libraries and uh, galleries all over the world that are full of the art created by people just like this. And they are not frozen moments in time. They are doorways. And just as myth is fluid, just as myth essentially is promiscuous, the, what these images have to say to a different generation is still available. You just have to have the eyes to see it. So, what's next? It's quite possible to completely re-experience time. A start is to regard the coming of night as a regular move into the eternal, the end of clock time till the sun rises the next day. Take questions to the night, questions that could never accomplish themselves in the agitation of daylight. Become a night walker, invite it to become an ally. And I mean, I learnt this uh, through the legacy of my father when I was growing up, and my dad was actually still a young guy. If he had a big question... He would head straight out from the house into the dark, maybe 10 o'clock at night, and we wouldn't see him till 2 in the morning. And he was really wandering from wandering the lanes uh, around the small town that we come from, just allowing certain thoughts to arc out and not be stopped by another human being or another human opinion, but out into the intelligence of night. Um, there's a great line by Galway Kinnell, isn't there? Galway Kinnell. Um, Half my life belongs to the wild darkness. And that's, uh, that's what I'm getting at, really. So what goddess glides through the open window? Night is a disorderly community of dreams, sudden fears, sideways epiphanies. We could allow the art we make of our life to beguile the moon to wander into our bedside and start to talk. This allows us to flood into the wisdom of shadows and the indistinct blessings that midnight offers. It's a grave mistake for us to only associate wisdom with the daylight hours or night of knowledge. We isolate ourselves from half the insights that 24 hours carry. And there's lots of sort of uh, different gods and goddesses attracted to the night. We have Lilith, Nyx, Lusty Pan and his wonderful and frankly disgraceful fantasies. The lunatics have taken over the asylum. So we could... 
become an apprentice to the way Caravaggio hand, handled colour, and we don't think about having an original thought for at least five years. We could allow ourselves to feel strange and slightly magical. We could compose poetry that was irritable, fiery, runs to hundreds of lines we learn by heart and recite to nearby jackdaws. We could write letters again and find the oldest mailbox we can to post them from. We could decide that our hips are an altar to old Romanian goddesses and take up belly dancing. That would probably look better with you than it may me, although I do have the belly for it. We could give out library cards as birthday presents. We could run a three-week course from our porch on the relationship between the Aztec temples and gypsy gambling games from medieval Wales. In short, we should not go easy on ourselves. <laughs>